top and bottom. There's an unspeakably primordial calculator deep within you at the very foundation of your brain, far below your thoughts and feelings. It monitors exactly where you are positioned in society, on a scale of 1 to 10 for the sake of argument. If you're a number one, the highest level of status, you're an overwhelming success. If you're male, you have preferential access to the best places to live and the highest quality food. People compete to do you favors. You have limitless opportunity for romantic and sexual contact. You are a successful lobster and the most desirable females line up and vie for your attention. If you're female, you have access to many high quality suitors. Tall, strong, and symmetrical, creative, reliable, honest, and generous. And like your dominant male counterpart, you will compete ferociously, even pitilessly, to maintain or improve your position in the equally competitive female mating hierarchy. Although you are less likely to use physical aggression to do so, there are many effective verbal tricks and strategies at your disposal, including the disparaging of opponents, and you may well be the expert at their use. If you are a low status 10, by contrast, male or female, you have nowhere to live, or nowhere good. Your food is terrible when you're not going hungry. You're in poor physical and mental condition. You're of minimal romantic interest to anyone unless they are as desperate as you. You are more likely to fall ill, age rapidly, and die young, with few, if anything, to mourn you. Even money itself may prove of little use. You won't know how to use it because it is difficult to use money properly, particularly if you are unfamiliar with it. Money will make you liable to the dangerous temptations of drugs and alcohol, which are much more rewarding if you have been deprived of pleasure for a long period. Money will also make you a target for predators and psychopaths who thrive on exploiting those who exist on the lower rungs of society. The bottom of the dominance hierarchy is a terrible, dangerous place to be. The ancient part of your brain specialized for assessing dominance watches how you are treated by other people. On that evidence, it renders a determination of your value and assigns you a status. If you are judged by your peers as of little worth, the counter restricts serotonin availability. That makes you much more physically and psychologically reactive to any circumstance or event that might produce emotion, particularly if it is negative. You need that reactivity. Emergencies are common at the bottom, and you must be ready to survive. Unfortunately, that physical hyper-response, that constant alertness, burns up a lot of precious energy and physical resources. This response is really what everyone calls stress, and it is by no means only, or even primarily, psychological. It's a reflection of the genuine constraints of unfortunate circumstances. When operating at the bottom, the ancient brain counter assumes that even the smallest unexpected impediment might produce an uncontrollable chain of negative events, which will have to be handled alone, as useful friends are rare indeed on society's fringes. You will therefore continually sacrifice what you could otherwise physically store for the future, using it up on heightened readiness and the possibility of immediate panicked action in the present. When you don't know what to do, you must be prepared to do anything and everything in case it becomes necessary. You're sitting in your car with the gas and brake pedals both punched to the mat. Too much of that and everything falls apart. The ancient counter will even shut down your immune system, expanding the energy and resources required for future health now, during the crises of the present. It will render you impulsive, so that you will jump, for example, at any short-term mating opportunities or any possibilities of pleasure, no matter how subpar, disgraceful, or illegal. It will leave you far more likely to live or die carelessly for a rare opportunity at pleasure when it manifests itself. The physical demands of emergency preparedness will wear you down in every way. If you have a high status, on the other hand, the counter's cold, pre-reptilian mechanics assume that your niche is secure, productive, and safe, and that you are well buttressed with your social support. It thinks the chance that something will damage you is low and can be safely discounted. Change might be opportunity instead of disaster. The serotonin flows plentifully. This renders you confident and calm, standing tall and straight, and much less on constant alert. Because your position is secure, the future is likely to be good for you. It's worthwhile to think in the long term and plan for a better tomorrow. You don't need to grasp impulsively at whatever crumbs come to your way, because you can realistically expect good things to remain available. 
You can delay gratification without foregoing it forever. You can afford to be a reliable and thoughtful citizen.